Nine Ninja 98. Yep. Come on, Tim. Nine Ninja 99. Come on, yeah, come on. Come on. One thousand. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. It's a deep burn. Tim's just done literally a thousand dips. <laughs> no. Minus but... 997. But we are working hard on redefining our impossible, and Tim, for one, has been loving training at home in the beautiful weather in this lovely little garden setup. I feel really inspired by you guys who are out there absolutely smashing it and redefining your impossible. It's giving us a little bit of renewed motivation to keep pushing forwards and thoroughly enjoying, as Jacko says, just being able to train at home, the convenience, I don't lose time going backwards and forwards to the gym, enjoying the outdoors, and also, David, increasing productivity. A little bit of a uh, What's it, superset? In between rest periods, take care of the garden. <laughs> <more watering. laughs> Sometimes mow the lawn, open letters, it's all the benefits. How long rest have I got left now? About ready to go. Yeah, your next thousand. Yeah, I've got another thousand. Better get on it, Dave. Send them off. So, there's, uh, there's lots of you at home have also been redefining your impossible, and here is a selection of this month's graduates. Bye. Over to the boys Six. in the uh, studio. So you lads look like you're enjoying yourself outside in the sun where we're having to do the hard yards in the, uh, in, the in this filming studio, a.k.a. my kitchen. I'm baking here, actually, with <laughs> direct sunshine. Without further ado, ado you, so well, one thing was you were asking for the top five. There was just too many you couldn't there was the one did, yeah, it just it, So it had to be a top six. Um, and yeah, I think you're going to like this. There's, there's a couple, there's one, and we can't wait to see your expression for it. There's one I think that you haven't, Maybe I'll be wrong, but I think you haven't seen it. Roll it. Roll the tape. I just thought we'd put a little bit of the bob along. <laughs> Awkward pause. There we go. Right. Oh, now. Claire Clark. Now then. This one's been getting big raps. One. If you've been watching our stuff on Instagram recently, you would have seen this. School of Calisthenics Virtual Classroom member. This out. The control... Not a s s single drop in shoulder or elbow position there. Presses out, straight up. Holding all day. Finish. We showed a video not that Happy long days. ago where um, she pushed out and then didn't have the control of the legs um, over the top. And that has been smoothed out with some work against the ball as recommended in the virtual classroom. And there you go. She's redefined her impossible. Amazing work on that one, Claire. It's absolutely inspiring to see, Jack. Would you not agree? Yes. Right, let's get this one going. Thomas, Dragon, now if we can listen. Dragon. Oh, rep two. Ooh, squeeze it out, snuck him. First two muscle ups. Nice. Um, unsure of the language and what was being said i was assuming it was a nice bit of encouragement and he was saying just make sure you look after your shoulders mate when you go over the bar <laughs> yeah that is one thing looking good it's that first bit i'll show you reverse now it's like it's super clean <laughs> but it's this little bit here that we just want to be careful I mean, it's a great job to get up with the bar we can see there that that's going back in reverse but we really got to make sure we want to look after the shoulders because if you do too much of these in these positions it just doesn't work out too well for the shoulder joint but the first couple of reps are never going to be the cleanest in the world so you've got them in the bag you can move forwards. Great yeah, work. That breaks down the mental barrier of like you haven't been able to get over the bar. Um, but then what we need to make sure we're doing is we're looking after the, the, the shoulder and not putting ourselves into, into potentially difficult positions. Next up, let's just enjoy the last little bit of this. I thought he was going to go for a third there. He looked confident. Ruben. So he's so close. Just pause it. He's so close to um, getting his full like frog to handstand and this... this um, piece in the middle the like sort of inverted chair and being able to control the feet going out of it we talk to people a lot of the time if you look at like look at his his, his position there up to his hips great alignment and we we talk an awful lot about going back to the wall like don't be afraid to not to, to use the wall and gradually get away from it or use it but just use it as little amount as possible and this was a great example for him of get that one step towards redefine is impossible where he can he's going to go through and if you yeah you're going to play it through you can press play and he'll, you'll see him trying to change and get up to that full position. Needs just a little dab, little dab, and then getting away, little dab. Just use it, not trying to rely on it, but it's there to catch him. And then he ultimately gets into a great shape and holds it and controls down. So when you think about being able to um, go from that, once we've got the strength to get into that inverted chair position, we've now got the ability to 
there's a lot of things going on. We're opening up at the, the hip, at the knee, and the feet are going to go everywhere. But he's now working with a little help from the wall, gradually using it less and less, to be able to understand and control where his feet are in relation to the rest of his body. And that is ultimately what you need to do if you're going to nail that handstand. Yeah, we often talk to people about this, about they want, once you get to a stage like, like rumors out here, you might want to feel like you want to move away from the wall, practicing free space. We always encourage people to go back to the wall and make it a central part of your training program until you've actually really got the confidence to be able to start to, to stick a couple of seconds really freestanding because it allows you to build up time on task. From a skill acquisition perspective, the wall just allows you to make those corrections and it allows you to stay in that position for longer. If you're practicing free space, as soon as you start to topple, you're gone and you've got to reset it. Yeah. So your cumulative time on attention for any given set on handstand practice is way, way, way bigger when you're using the wall. It just needs you to manage your ego a little bit to put the work in to get there and then just to spend the time working on that progression. That yeah, stage. and you're getting that sense of reward, whereas when you fall over all the time in freestanding space, sometimes it can be, if it's not going well, it can be a little bit... Um, uh, get you down a little bit when it's not when you're not feeling it. So you get that sense of reward. You get that sense of feeling like, okay, I'm actually doing this thing. And the thing that's hard about handstand as well is like it's it's costly from an energy perspective to get <laughs> yeah. back into a handstand. Yeah. Like yeah. You, you end up using loads of energy just to get back to a point where you were before. Whereas a wall gives you that time to just enjoy it. Was that number three? Press, press it. That was number three. I should put numbers on it, shouldn't I? Number Here four. we go. Amy, oh, now Amy. Have there. you seen this one? So you've seen a fit. So again, another virtual classroom student, and this girl absolutely kills it when it comes to training. And She's how? So like, look at this all day, all day, all day, all day. She's confident, eh? Yeah. And she said one that the message came with. She said around the fact that you know, she's been she's been working hard in the virtual classroom, following the programs, and got to a point where, and it's something that you've talked about before. She was like, "I've got to the point now with my handstand that I am I'm happy enough." that it's uh, this is yeah, I'm ready yeah. for graduation and and for me like she's there for absolutely it. like it could have it doesn't have to be that lot like, for someone else it's going to be a less time but i love that concept of you're in control of deciding when you're happy with your movement and that is how the right way around it should be you should be you're the one that's in control of whether you think you're happy with with what you're doing and some of the some of the control the adjustments that she makes is that's what a lot of us when we're first starting out we're missing and we we want to try and rush that process and to make, if we go back at just a smidge where she, like you see like the fingers and the shoulders, just like, it looks like she's going to lose it one way and then brings it back and lose the other. And, and that is, that takes time to develop. That can't just yeah, happen all is. of a sudden. Um, but when you do get that, when you've got the opportunity, you've got the two, um, you've got the two sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like adjustments that if your feet are going too far over the top, you know how to adjust it back. And then if they want, when they start coming backwards down towards the floor, you know how to adjust them back towards the middle. When you have those two things and you start to play around with those two things in harmony, that's when you start to balance and you can't rush that. The last thing I like is it's blatantly clear. Even though the shadows are casting a, a, over her face, there is a big smile. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Face, which I'm enjoying. She if, you like, with herself. if you like smiles, you're going to like number five <laughs> and six, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. There's some celebrations. Ben, James, Ernest, again, virtual classroom uh, Red students. Rings. Probably dazzlers. Muscle up? Mm, I don't know. Not got a false grip oh, of good, good eyes, Tim. Back lever. These are the red rings you wanted, don't they? Back lever. Oh, I don't yeah. want red straps. Oh, solid. Sunnies. Flatten the back. Flatten the back. Makes the adjustment in the lever position. One gets day, the one, two. gets the two, puts the hammer down. Go on. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> 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 Jacko on. production work. Jacko on the edit. <laughs> That's looking good. There's that last, that real nice little bit of where we're just going to see if we can find our way back. That shape here, this is the real crux of this. And to get that point where we can hold it for a little bit longer, you've done all the right stuff. So you get in here, you got to go from that position where you've sort of still got a little bit of that spinal flexion. Just up in here, you can see a curve through. And what he's got to do is shift that weight forwards a little bit there. Yeah, so it's just flat, offsetting yeah. it. So you can all of a sudden see the head goes forward, distributing more weight either side of the, of the base of support on the rings. So he's got that nice, strong position. And from there, yeah. that's created that, the anchor. Yeah. That position there throws it out we could probably just to try and get a little bit more tension through the back of the body just point the toes a touch just to try and help lengthen things out which will help i think one so if we're being critical one thing that then happens is as the other leg gets extended out so more weight coming down at that far end that the the hip drops down from being in line yeah. with the shoulder it was to a yeah. lower position and so when we're trying to work you know we just talked about you be you deciding when you know and look how happy he was well that's the first time he's actually managed to hold some sort of shape there in his back lever um 
and now it's around uh, there is probably a bit of a job of just as you get to cement that down thinking about how do I maintain a slightly higher hip position so we're not sort of putting too much stress down just purely at the yeah down through that chain and that the hip can stay up and connected in line with the shoulder maintaining that nice flat back position yeah good job all right nice on the celebration let's just enjoy that again for a second he is buzzing. he's popped his eye. head inside say hello to mate <laughs> yeah, no, I I'll like. have it proof thanks yeah two sugars all right paul hey ho yeah he's actually he's, he's a, again he's a virtual customer but he's been uh, been in the workshop as well yes know that mate. Oh, oh if what he does oh, well oh, oh, oh. You're gonna like this. Like wait for balance. this. Wait for the celebration. <laughs> <laughs> the little, the little a hop. skip and a jump. This is an interesting one because I had this conversation with another uh, student earlier last week. And do we want to straighten the arms before we straighten the legs, or do you straighten the legs before you straighten the arms? Well, the answer is you can do both. Paul's given a great example here of straightening the legs before you straighten the arms. If you watch me do a handstand or this movement, I'll straighten my arms before yeah. I straighten the legs. It's just different horses of courses um you can still achieve the same outcome the the difference is as he comes up he actually finds in this angle here the body's finding quite a strong place from shoulder perspective yeah. so it's actually dropping in right i'm strong here and then we're going to start to use that strength and then you're going to see here as the legs straighten the arms are going to go at the same time so maybe we use a little bit of momentum as the legs moving upwards which is going to help to straighten the arms just takes a little bit the the, the weight off or, or reduces the load a little bit just from an assistance perspective but we end up getting out into a nice shape and then he works hard at that top end just to try and stabilize it the one thing that i think is of benefit to think about when you're doing these movements is if you do want to put the effort in to get a straight arm it's in that top end position you will find that if you can control this that line here with the shoulders you've then got more time to think about where the legs are going when you're in yeah. that slump position and i say slump or arms bent you have to work really hard to try and maintain this angle here with the shoulders to keep the balance legs go up and then all of a sudden you've got to try and stabilize the shoulder joint and you've got yeah. to stabilize the feet so you've got two things which is trying to control it just adds a load onto the neural system yeah um, and we'd probably say with the with the knees bent and the feet closer down towards the floor in that tuck position when you're trying to have to control your balance if he's trying to press out here then there's less to deal with up mm. in the sky there if those legs are stayed down once you straighten out the other thing that it does really well with because it's tough is Compared to Claire at the beginning where that shoulder angle didn't change when he first takes those knees off, we get that little drop and sink down there. And what happens for a lot of us, if that if we start going down, there's no way we're going back up. So it does a great job strength-wise to be able to then actually get up from there and potentially why the body knows that the legs are going to help with that. Some of it comes around to that. Um, but if he wants to, uh, if Paul wants to keep it, like, handstands for us are always a, an evolution. They're a development um, it might start with a kick up or it starts with a frog stand. It develops into different things. Um, if he wants to, as Tim said, work a bit more on his balance and we're gonna, it's gonna, he's going to benefit from having that straighter arm position. If he wants to work on the pressing strength and the control, working on being able to take those um, knees off at the beginning and not drop down at all. And you'll see, you know, if you look at the two videos between his and Claire's, you'll see the difference of the two. But, you know, all of that is wrapped up on advice tips help for for paul but also for you watching that you may have similar issues going on with your frog to handstand and it's all wrapped up in um the fact that that's the first time he's actually managed to get up and hold it and that is something to be something yeah. to be celebrated and you saw 100%. the 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 key thing about it, the, the the best thing about the, the all of it is when he comes down he is pumped <laughs> and if you are pumped like that you're going to go back to the gym and you, or you, wherever you train, you're going to carry on your training. You're going to carry on your, your progress. Yeah, don't be too hard on yourself. It's easy for us to sit here and sort of pick points that we would say you could improve. But when you've done something like a handstand and you got there and held it for the first time, take that as a massive win. Then decide what you want to do with it. That might be enough. You might never do anything with it again. Yeah. But that's up to you. Um, we're just trying to give you some ideas to help hopefully make these things a little bit easier um, and just to make those, those that the, the process, if you want to go and do something else down the line with your handstand, for example, or the back lever, whatever it might be, the, the more sort of efficiency you've got in the movement, the less energy costly it is and therefore you can do more. So just teeing you up for future success and future impossible to redefine yeah and as exactly as it says on the screen underneath scorecast and it's redefine your impossible and that is what this is about and that's and, it's, and this video in particular is about celebrating those people that have redefined their impossible or have done a step along that process 
Um, and hopefully you watching get the, get the inspiration from seeing them as well as hopefully some, some tips and advice that you might also, little bits you might be struggling with that's going to help you to redefine yours. So if you've got a video on a send us, if you've graduated, if you've got to a point where you've done something which you're happy with, which you think is, um, is ready for a, for a graduation, please send it to us. You can drop it to us on an email or you can send it to um, us direct on Instagram via DM, yep. email address, Jacko. Or Facebook. Um, yep. Email is david at scorecardsnotes.com. Nice and easy. That's my first name, Jacko. Um, and even if, if you're just a step along the way and you just need some help and, and, and some advice and you're like, this isn't my graduation video, but I just want, I'm doing this. I need a little bit of help. Then uh, feel free to send us those and we were always here to help you with your progress along the way. If you really feel like you want a full program to follow and you want that sort of week by week, step by step, uh, way through to some of these movements and, and want to join the, the community of people inside the virtual classroom then you can get uh, we've got a few different options now actually mm. we've got the beginners membership which is only 10 pound a month and we've got the full membership which is absolutely everything in there uh, which is 25 but you get a seven day free trial of that so you can try it for a week and see if it is right for you everything you need and proves to put in tons of people getting success yeah there is nothing else to say until next week month next month class dismissed Oh, 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 oh,